Hello YouTube people. So in this video I get to show you some advanced math, which is actually pretty easy to make some amazing effects. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, you need to download the files from GitHub, which I have linked here. Make sure you switch the branch from master to trigonometry. And then we, we'll talk through the files and see how this works. It's actually a lot easier than it appears. In order to download from the correct branch, what you'll need to do is click on the drop down that says master, select the respective branch, then on code, click download zip. Save this and you have your files. So we're going to look through the tutorial file and this is a uh, different from the master branch and we'll talk through the differences. The first thing is import math because you know what we're going to use some math to make some cool effects. What cool effects? Well we'll get to that. Most of the file is the same however what we're adding is laser types. I'm going to show you four types of lasers here. So let's run the game. The first one is the standard laser. That's really boring, right? The next one is the homing. So it starts off, this is standard, right? However, as soon as an enemy appears, ooh, look at that. These bullets are just going straight to the enemy. As they appear, they fly up and they chase. That's pretty neat, right? The next one is uh, what I call a chase, an actual chase. Again, it fires normally. And when an enemy appears, what these bullets will do, instead of flying straight to, you'll see that they, they swarm to and chase an enemy. We have the final bullet type, which is targeting. So I'm just going to sit here and fire. I'm just not going to do anything. Oh, what's that? There's some uh, enemies appearing. I'm not worried. Each bullet is going straight to the enemy. That's cool stuff, right? So when uh, the player fires is where passing variables as parameters into the lasers class and instead of directly accessing the laser laser dot ammo type equals ammo type why do that nah we'll pass that as a parameter makes it easy we have the same thing for enemies however we pass just different parameters we're passing a false instead of the enemy list. We're passing a zero as the ammo type. And we're passing a false for this mysterious final parameter. Let's see. We also, instead of we, instead of having laser.type, I've changed the name to laser.playerLaser. And it's a boolean now, which means it's either true or false. So if the laser is a player, then it does the same code. If it's not a player bullet, it does well, the same code it what did before. And then of course, for, we're overloading the draw function for the laser. With the uh, sprite groups, when you call the draw function, it's, it's just going to draw all the sprites in that group. But we need to do a little bit of extra a little bit extra to the lasers. So we're going to go through the entire laser group and we're going to draw each one separately. And then this one, I have it ammo type two, it should be ammo type three because this is a targeting laser. I actually had this on the wrong ammo type now that I think about it, that's okay. So this is a targeting laser. And this is a sample of the code we're going to be looking at. 
just real quickly because it's not that complicated. So we have our en enemy list. If there's an enemy on the screen, we're going to find the closest enemy. So we're going to go through the entire enemy list. We're going to get the middle of the player sprite and the middle of the enemy sprite in order to get a start position and an end position. Next, we're going to calculate the distance. And in order to calculate the distance, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, this is middle school stuff here, but this is why you pay attention to school. So you have a player and you have an enemy, and we need to find the distance between the two. So in order to fire our little laser, laser normally goes across horizontally, but we want to shoot it at the enemy. Ta-da! Magic! Find the distance. Pythagorean theorem is, in order to find the hypotenuse, we have the length squared plus the height squared, and that equals our c squared. The uh, Python code format, I have it written out for you. In order to have a variable to the power, we use two asterisks because we can't really like superset a number. Amazing, huh? And then, um, so on here we have the A representing the horizontal length between the player and the enemy, is this line. And we uh, can calculate that by taking the enemy x value and subtract the player x value. That will give us our A. The B is just the same thing, but it's vertical. It's the vertical length between the player and the enemy. We have the, uh, in order to solve for that, we have the enemy y value and we subtract the player y value. That gives us our B. And the distance c is what it is the distance between the player and enemy the direct line so we have our distance squared equals our enemy x minus our player x squared plus our enemy y value minus the player or minus the player y value squared that'll give us our distance squared and in order to solve that in our code, we put parentheses around it because what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root. Because we have c to the power of 2, we need a normal c. In order to do that, we take the square root of both sides of the equal sign. So instead of our distance squared, we now have our distance equals the square root of our a squared b squared enemy x minus player x squared, enemy y, player y squared. Once we have the distance, we're going to calculate the angle. And the angle, where you, this is one of our magic formulas besides the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to use arctangent. So in, mar in standard math terms, we have an arctangent, and in Python code, we use the math library to call ATAN, and normally we did put in a variable. Now for an arctangent with an x and a y value, we need to use atan2. Instead of putting x, y, we put the y first. And you can actually play around in the code and swap the value, values to see what happens. The angle, instead of going towards the enemy, is going to go away. Now it's important to know that the angle it gives you is in radians, it's not degrees. Because with radians, what we need to do is we're going to set the direction using the angle. So with our laser, it's going to have a force. And with the force, it's going to use the cosine of the angle to give it an x force, the horizontal force, and the y force is the sine of the angle. That's going to make it move up or down. So with a x-force and y-force, all we have to do is loop it 
for the x value and y. So if there's an x force of one, it's just going to move across the screen. It should be like what that way. <laughs> if it's a negative one, it's going to move that way. And the y value if it's negative and if it's positive. So now that we have the angle, we're going to draw a line from the player point to the enemy point, the start and the end. But we need to know a lot more about a line. So once we have the angle, we're going to place dots along the path of the line. And this is that loop I was talking about of the x and y value. So we have a distance. Remember we calculated the distance using the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to divide that by 10. So, so it's going to be about like 10 spots. And that's what we're going to call a speed. So every so often it's going to put a green dot along that gray line. Now, what we're going to do while we're still in this enemy loop is we're going to see if this enemy is the closest to the player ship. Since we, since we calculated the distance using the Pythagorean theorem, this is easy. We just get the smallest number. So the distance calculated is less than our remembered closest number. We're just going to update our closest number and we're going to remember our target enemy location. That's all that in this enemy group loop. It's not too scary, right? So now that we know what our closest enemy x and y value are, we're going to draw a red line pointing to the closest enemy. So this would be like a little red uh, aiming turret on the gun. This is where we use the arctangent again to find that angle. And we're using the same loop we used previously. And we're just going to draw a short little red line. And it's going to be actually five dots long <laughs> because we're going counting by twos that's it end of section that's it for tutorial so what we'll do is we'll change this ammo type to three it's already on three now let's look at that line stuff we just talked about pew 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 oops all right so the gray line is is a python just drawing a line and these green dots that's putting a dot every little lo <laughs> every little location on along that line and it's kind of hard to see here but if you look at the player location let's shoot, clear some of these enemies out this little red line is pointing to the closest enemy that's really hard to see so what we'll do is we're going to comment out these draws. So pew pew. Our gun is facing forward. And now if you look at the player sprite, you can see these five little red points pointing to the closest enemy. And it's changing. Oof. It changes as we get to a different closer enemy. Or a different enemy that's closer. That's cool stuff. So that's going to tell us where to shoot. That's why I'm saying this section is completely optional. You can delete it. You can play with it. It's good stuff. This is your playground. This whole file is your playground. So the next thing is the enemy class. We've only made two changes here. Instead of having a set speed, we are assigning speed to a variable. So instead of rect x minus equals 1, we have it plus equals the speed, and the speed is negative 1. So we need to know what the enemy's speed is in order to for another calculation in the lasers. As for the player, I added a fire delay. Previously it was 100 and I slowed it down to 500. 
And that's so that we can get a uh, better idea and we can see better of how these, how the lasers fire. So, for example, I'm just going to set it to 10. That's neat, right? So we'll change that back to 500. And finally, we made a lot of changes to our lasers class because, you know what, that's where we added our lasers, is the lasers class. The first thing is we import math and I added a note of the different type of lasers that we've added. So when we initialize the laser, we're adding some new parameters. The initial X and Y value, the entire enemy group, the ammo type, and if it's a player laser or not. I swapped around the the sprites for the the player and the enemy, so now zero is enemy and one is player. <clears throat> I did this to match the true false value of player laser. So if it's false, it's gonna false typically means zero and true typically means one. So I just made the frames match that. It's better readability. Now we start digging into the good stuff. In this initialization function, there's quite a few changes. So we have the player laser set to a player laser. This is the flag. Instead of self.type equals one or zero, depending on if it's a player or enemy, we just renamed it to player laser and it's either true or false. We've also set an ammo type. And then enemy target stores the targeted enemy sprite. That's going to be used later, depending on what type of bullet we use. And we're going to set the laser starting position. Most, if not all of these values are going to be overwritten by formulas later on. That's okay. We just need to initialize them. Then we have some uh, variables used for math. We have an X force and a Y force. As explained earlier, that affects the X and Y location. And I should I should state that the X float and the Y float value are the floating point values, or the floating point numbers that we're going to use or apply math on. And then the rect is the is the init integer value of the float. So we're just converting a float to an integer. We're not going to worry about rounding at all, which is okay. Now continuing, we have an angle of the laser and we have how fast the laser is going to move. So depending on our ammo, we have special functions. So if it's straight, then the force is just going to be the speed and it's just going to move across the screen. The Y force is zero, which means it's not going to move up or down. Ammo one, well, all we're doing is we're loading the entire enemy list into the enemy target. So that whole group is shoved into a variable. And then uh, for the chasing bullet, we'll do the same thing. And then for targeted, we have a special function named calculate target, which we're going to call. As we move on to update, this, this is going to affect how the laser moves across the screen. Depending on the ammo type, so the standard linear way, this is unchanged. We've just shoved it into ammo type equals one. And then ammo type one is the homing shot. And this is where we need the enemy target, the entire enemy group shoved into the enemy target variable. So whenever a shot is homing and it destroys an enemy, any other shots that are floating around, if that enemy's gone, they'll need to know where to go. Otherwise they're just gonna go to that one spot and just hover around. We don't want that. So it's just going to target the the first enemy it encounters in the group and it's going to immediately break out of this loop. And all we're going to do is move the uh, the absolute location of the X and Y. If it's less than the target, we're going to uh, move it closer. We're just going to move it closer on the X and Y axis only. Otherwise, if there's no enemies found, this is going to move across the screen. So ammo type 2 is the 
is the the chasing one. This is where we start to use the X Force and the Y Force. We're gonna do the exact same thing, just target the first enemy we come across. And now we're going to instead of affect the absolute X and Y value, we're gonna change the X and Y force. And the force is gonna change the X and Y value. So the more force we have, the faster it's gonna move in that direction. And of course, if it if there's no enemies, it's just gonna move across the screen. So as I said, applied the force to the coordinates, the floating point coordinates, because if we apply it to the integer coordinates, well, we're going to lose some important numbers and it's going to move not as smooth. You can try changing it to rex.x and see what happens. It's not going to be very smooth. And of course, as I was saying, we convert the float to an integer. We don't care about anything after the decimal. We just want the whole number. After that, we're going to use some trigonometry. And here's the arc tangent. But we're just passing the X force and the Y force. Now this is doing that angle. We're going to use that to rotate the laser. So if the laser has a lot of force moving that way, well, we need the laser to point that way. If it's that way, it's going to point that way. And finally, we have the targeting laser. This one is a lot shorter than the other ones because it has force. Force is already set. The force has been calculated. It's It knows where it's going, so we don't need to do any more math on it. And again, we apply the force to the absolute location. Now, here is the draw function I was talking about. This is overloaded because what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that laser sprite. Rotation is going to be used quite a bit uh, in the future. I know I'm going to use it a lot, but for now let's just stick to one sprite, which is the laser. So, in order for rotation to work, we can't use radians, we need to use degrees. In order to do that, we need the formula to convert radians to degrees. And that's the angle in radians multiplied by 180 divided by the value of pi. Oh boy, pi. And we're going to set that to negative so that our angle, instead of, you'd expect this to fly this way, not this way. <laughs> right. That's why I make it negative. Then we have the rotated image. This is our actual rotation. Pi game handles this for us. Thank you. <laughs> make it easy. So we're going to take our sprite and we're just going to rotate it by the angle in degrees. After that, we're going to come up with a, a new rex. And we want it to rotate from the center of the sprite. We, because normally it'll, it'll rotate it from the top left. We don't want that. We want to rotate it in the middle. And we're going to place that the top left of the rotate image onto the window that we're past. And finally we have the calculate target. This is the custom function for targeting. And I have this split out into a couple sections hopefully to help with readability. And uh, we're passing it the enemy list and that's it. Because all we need to know is where the player is, where the enemy is, and we're going to do the calculations to target where to fire the laser as the enemy moves. Boom. So if there's no enemies, then we're just going to shoot the laser as normal. If we do have an enemy, we're going to find the closest one to us. And uh, what we can do is, uh, I have a variable in here named shortest. I should have named it closest, but eh, whatever. So this is the range of how far we want to look for. This would be helpful if uh, you're doing like a tower defense game. You have a little tower and you want it, you want a short range. So an enemy comes along, once it's in the range, 
then we can target it. There. So all we do is we use the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem again, calculate the distance. If it's the shortest distance we know, we're going to update it. And then the thing about sprite groups is that they can't be indexed. So we're going to make a reference to that sprite directly. And this is what we load into the enemy target self variable. After we find the, the uh, closest enemy, all we're going to do is calculate the laser from the player to that enemy. So if the enemy target is found, we're going to get the middle of the sprite instead of the top left. So in order to find the middle, you have the x value and you have the width. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the width, divide it by 2. You're going to add... You're going to add X to it, and that gives you the middle. <laughs> I hope that explanation was clear. That doesn't sound clear. It's the shortest X and Y middle. And then we're going to do the same for the laser. So we have the middle of the laser. We have the middle of the enemy. And we're going to use those two points to calculate the angle. Starting with the... Uh, we have the enemy y position, the laser y position, we're going to subtract them both to get the difference. And that's how we're going to get the angle. And it's important to note that this angle is uh, calculated without considering how fast the enemy is moving. We want the current position of the enemy. And then once we have that angle, we're going to calculate the enemy's angle. So right now in this game, the enemy is just moving across the screen very slowly and uh, it doesn't move up or down so the angle is going to be zero <laughs> oops it's zero but I have the calculation in here anyway so what you can do is if you want to change the enemy values if you go into the enemy class all you have to do in update you have the self rect speed. You can change the speed. You can also add something like like a y value. Y equals 1. So as soon as the enemy appears on the screen, it's going to go down. So the angle, instead of it being going across being 0, it, it'll recalculate it for that downward angle. So now we have two angles. We have the angle of the laser, and then we have the shortest angle, which is the angle of the enemy. In this case, it's going to be zero. So now we need to apply the force. Use the force. So in our previous formula, we have the angle and the speed for the laser. And then what we need to do is we need to add the angle of the enemy and the speed. So instead of the enemy's current location, it's going to be the enemy's future location. Where, is, where are they going to intersect? And then uh, how much these two lines determine how much we need to uh, <laughs> apply the X and Y force to shoot it in that direction. Otherwise, we're just going to shoot across. And that's it. Right. 30 minutes, not bad, huh? So again, a demo. So there's no enemy sprites. As soon as an enemy appears, we're going to start targeting it. See, we could just fire one at a time. No matter where we are, it's going to fire to the closest enemy. You can even hide down here and just shoot, and it'll target the location to each one. Nothing to worry about. These enemies won't pass. Like I said, easy.